This video defines absolute convergence and how it's related to convergence for a series. A series is called absolutely convergent if the series of absolute values of the terms converges. Please pause the video for a moment and try to decide which of the following series are convergent and which ones are absolutely convergent. The first series is convergent because it's a geometric series with ratio r equal to negative 0.8. It's also absolutely convergent because if I take the series of absolute values, that's the same thing as the, ser the geometric series with a ratio of 0.8, which is also convergent. The second series, the sum of 1 over the square root of k, is not convergent. We can see this by the p-test, since p is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. It's also not absolutely convergent. In this case, the sum of the absolute values of the terms is just the same as the sum of the original terms, which we already said diverges. The third series is the sum of negative 1 to the j times 1 over j. This is a convergent series by the alternating series test. In fact, this is the alternating harmonic series. What about absolute convergence? If we look at the sum of the absolute values of the terms, that's just the same thing as the regular harmonic series, which diverges. So this series is not absolutely convergent. Here's a question for you. Is it possible to have a series that's convergent but not absolutely convergent? Please pause the video for a moment and try to answer this question. The answer is yes. We just saw an example of such a series, the alternating harmonic series. There are many other examples of such series, and in fact, there's a special name for them. They're called conditionally convergent. A series is called conditionally convergent if it is convergent, but not absolutely convergent. In symbols, that is, the sum of the ANs converges but the sum of the absolute values of the ANs diverges. Next question for you. Is it possible to have a series that's absolutely convergent but not convergent? This is a little trickier, but please pause the video for a moment and think about your answer. The answer to this one is no. It's a fact that every absolutely convergent series is convergent. Let me prove to you why that's true. Let's suppose that we have a series that's absolutely convergent. That is, the sum of the absolute values of the ANs converges. We know that the ANs might be positive or negative, but they do have to lie in between the absolute value of an and the negative absolute value of an. Actually, it's true that a sub n is either equal to its absolute value or its negative absolute value, but I'm writing it this way with inequalities to help set the mood for using the comparison test. Now, I can't quite use the comparison test here to, to prove that the series of a sub n's converges, because even though the a sub n's are less than or equal to the terms of a convergent series, they're not necessarily positive or greater than or equal to zero. And the comparison test only applies to series whose terms are all greater than equal to, or equal to zero. But there's a nice trick to get around that difficulty. And that trick is to add the absolute value of a sub n to all the sides of the inequality. So then I get zero is less than or equal to a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n, which is less than or equal to twice the absolute value of a sub n. Now, since the sum of the absolute value of a sub n converges, so does 
the sum of twice the absolute value of a sub n, since it's just a constant multiple. Based on this inequality, which now does involve terms that are greater than or equal to zero, I can conclude that the sum of a sub n plus the absolute value of a sub n converges based on the ordinary comparison test. But now the series that we want, the sum of the a sub n's, can be written as a difference. And we know that a series formed by subtracting the terms of two convergent series itself converges. So this converges, in fact, to the difference of the sums. We've proved that if our series is absolutely convergent, then it must be convergent. The fact that absolute convergence implies convergence can come in handy when you're trying to prove that a series converges, as in the following example. In this example, we want to prove that this series is convergent or divergent, but the cosine and sine make things a little bit tricky. My intuition here is that this series should converge, since cosine and sine are bounded, and so this essentially should behave something like the sum of 1 over n cubed, which converges because of the p-test. But we can't just compare our series to the sum of 1 over n cubed and use the ordinary comparison test like we've done in similar problems in the past. What's different here is that our terms are not always going to be positive because sine and cosine can be positive and negative, and so can their sum. To help us out of this pickle, let's think about absolute convergence instead. If we look at the sum of the absolute values, which is the same as the sum of the absolute value of the numerator divided by n cubed, since cosine of n is between 1 and negative 1, and sine of n is also in between 1 and negative 1, we know that the sum cosine n plus sine of n has to be less than or equal to 2 and bigger than or equal to negative 2. In fact, it can't even get all the way to 2 or all the way down to negative 2. We could find a tighter bound if we tried, but this is good enough for our purposes. This inequality can be rewritten as the absolute value of cosine n plus sine of n is less than or equal to 2. And if I divide both sides here by n cubed, I have an inequality involving positive terms. So since we know the sum of 1 over n cubed converges by the p-test, that implies that the sum of 2 over n cubed also converges as just a constant multiple. And that implies that the sum of my absolute value of cosine n plus sine n over n cubed converges by the comparison test. Therefore, we know that our series is absolutely convergent. And therefore, it must be convergent, since an absolutely convergent series is always convergent. We've shown that our original series converges. In this video, we saw that if a series is absolutely convergent, then it has to be convergent, but not vice versa.